in this first problem minimum common value is say it's a very easy problem it says that we are given two integer array nums one and nums two sorted in the non decreasing order which means increasing order with the same values also now again that can be a very big thing for us to figure out what's the answer now we have to return the minimum integer common to both the arrays we have to return the minimum integer okay first condition is it should be minimum and it should be common between both the arrays now if there is no common which means if there is nothing common then simply return a minus one and it is said that integer is said to be a common between nums one and nums two if both the arrays have at least one occurrence of that specific integer for example if we have these two arrays we can easily see that the common integers between both of them are two only two and he is the only one minimum so answer will be two itself you can see answer is two itself now if i take these two arrays the common elements between these two arrays are two three and that's it so common elements are two and three minimum is two so you can easily say answer is two now uh, how we will do it for sure uh, you just need to know any element in nums two which is also present in nums one so if we write the exact same thing in english any element in nums two which is also present in nums one so one way one way to figure out if something is also present okay i can just say any element in nums two so i can simply take the nums two and can simply ask if that element is present in nums one i know that this portion is sorted this portion is sorted so to know if some element is present in a sorted area i can simply apply a binary search that's option number one so with that option i can simply know that i can apply a binary search to know if that element is present in my nums one or not option number two what can we have okay binary search we know that okay if you use a binary search then uh, we are iterating on the n elements here although it is n and m elements but roughly we can say it is n elements here we are uh, going on so n elements we are going on and then we are applying a binary search on nums one of length n itself so it will be roughly n log n although I can say okay the size is n it is m so it will be n log m but yeah you know the fact that okay, it will be n log m but can I improve it for sure my ultimate aim was that any element in nums2 it should be present in my it should be present in my nums1 now should be present why can't I make I make again now to know something is present or not what you can you what you can do you can simply say if its frequency if its frequency is one or not if something's frequency is one okay for sure it's present so i can simply say one thing i can keep this nums one in a hash map or a hash set both will say okay hash map will say okay element two is, element one is there with the frequency of one element two with the frequency of one element three, element three with the frequency of one and look up in a hash set or a hash map is a o of one operation so i can either keep track in a hash set which is one two three or i can keep track in a hash map which says okay one two and three now i can easily go and look for okay is it two present in my hash set or a hash map and that lookup operation is o of one operation so i can simply say that firstly i'll do a pre-computation of my nums one which will take o of m time and then when i will be looking off for elements from my nums two in my nums one i'll go and check for the specific element in my nums one by looking up in a hash or a hash map if that is present great and that lookup operation is o of one operation so it will be o of n here so total it will be o of n plus m which is for short better than if we had done a binary search for just simple lookup right so that is what we will do we will simply use and make a hash set or a hash map to know what's the element in nums1 so what i will do is i will take an unordered set which is a hash set and grab all the elements again i can easily take a set because i want one at least one i should have one frequency that's it so i just got all the nums1 elements i pushed it into my set one that's my hash set now i did on all the elements of my nums2 and to know if that element is present in my set one if that is present bro that is the first common element because i know my nums2 is sorted in the non-decreasing order so the first one the first element which is present in my set one will be the common element and that will i will simply return if i tried for everything and no one was returned i'll simply return a minus one so you will see it's time complexity is simply nothing but o of n plus m 
So if we, if we take simply take that O of n elements, like n elements in nums 2, m elements in nums 1, nums 1, so it will be O of n plus m. Space for sure O of m. That will be a time and space. Now, can we improvise it? Yeah, for sure we can. How 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 to even think of we can improvise it? See, when I say improvise, then your time compensated right now is O of n plus m and space is O of m. That is your time. Okay, and space. It is already linear. Right, and you want to know one common element between both of them. So for sure, linear time. Okay, you can say it is a linear time. Okay, maybe I can reduce a bit up time of all uh, itself, but for sure it's a linear time. So I cannot optimize it so much. I cannot make it as O of one. But space, maybe I can make my space as O of one. That's an option with me, right? Okay, so I'll do the exact same stuff. Maybe I don't need extra space. So what I will do? I will simply use a concept what they have already told. It's non-decreasing, which means it's actually increasing and same also. So what we can easily see is, okay, if we go on from the left, if we go on from the left in both the arrays simultaneously, the first element which comes in common, that will be my answer. Now, both, if we go on in the both the arrays simultaneously, what's that? That's nothing but two pointers. So I can simply keep track of two pointers here. I and j i know both are i know both are sorted so i can simply keep track okay i and j are they equal if they are not okay move one of the pointers move one of the pointers who to move okay for sure which one is small because i know okay if it is small maybe in future i can find a larger same element so i can move my smaller smaller value pointer i will move okay i i have moved now i have become i and j Oh, they are same. If they are same, simply stop. What if, if they would not have been same? Let's say if this would have been, uh, let's say 1.5. Al although like I just wanted to have a number between 1 and 2. So that's the reason I just put it. But it will be always integer. But for sure, let's imagine that it is, it is 1.5. Then for sure, uh, now if they would not have been same. So my J would have been moved. And same way, I will keep on moving my INJ. Whosoever is small will move. That's it. And but in our case, we had a two here. So yeah, we mashed it up to and to match it up. And that's the answer for us. And I will simply return that nums of i. If in the end I reach the super end, for sure, I will return a minus one. And with that, you will see that you will go on up till, okay, whosoever has a minimum length, whosoever has a minimum length, you will go up till this point. Because after this, J will not be able to move. So, it is kind of roughly I am saying I will move on my i, I will move on my j. In the worst case, I will move on my n, I will move on my m. For sure. And, and with that fact, whosoever, if I get i and j as same, which means uh, nums of i and nums of j as same, then I will simply say, bro, it's the answer else. My answer is minus 1. So, that's the reason I will simply use a two-pointer approach in which I will take i and j pointers i pointer for nums1, j pointer for nums2 and uh, while my i is less than my nums1 dot size and j is less than my nums2 dot size. I can actually move on. I'll simply keep on moving. Now, if whosoever is small, whosoever, for sure, if, if, if both are equal, which means if it goes on to else condition, if both are equal, which means nums1 of i is equal to nums2 of j, then for sure, bro, that is the answer. Return that answer. If not, then whosoever is small, that one will move. If nums1 of i is small, i will move. Nums1, nums2 of j is small, then j will move. Okay. And I will keep on moving until I can actually move. And ultimately, if I, I get my answer, I will simply return from here itself. If not, then minus 1 is the for sure answer for us. Now, you can simply see that it will keep on moving until it can move. So, n plus m, it will keep on doing. Okay, it will go on and trade on both the arrays, nums1, nums2, n plus m, it will keep on going. But, 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 space, you will see no space is being used. So, for sure, for us, answer will be n plus m with no space being used. And that's how you simply optimize it. Although, by the first look itself, if you had been following us, then by the first look itself, it was very readily visible that it's a two-pointer question. But still. We have to build this fake thing in an interview because faking, see, in interview, you have to fake a lot of stuff. So, fake it until you make it. In the beginning, faking is not that easy. For the people who don't know how to fake, it's very hard to fake up. But you have to fake. You have to fake. Cool. Bye-bye. Thank you so much watching. So, give all the approaches, three approaches. By such is a bullshit approach, but with that. Bye-bye. Take care. Cheers.